the crypto has crashed and gone up, the stocks has crashed and gone up, what about the property market? Will it crash? How can something be going up and you say that it's affordable? Property is just bricks and concrete. The rental market is going very strong. Store up cash for safety net. Property generally, the prices move much slower compared to stocks market. I don't see a problem like even crash happening. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cafe Money. We have Benny, Chu and, uh, and Ken here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. so today we are going to talk about the property market because a lot of you have been asking us to talk about property. So will the property market crash in the next few months? What do you guys think? <laughs> so I, I would say that like uh, for the past few months, especially this year in Singapore at least, right, and I think in a lot of the country, we can see that you know the interest rate has gone down, and because of that, mortgage has gone down. So as a result, right, the property prices has actually gone up because people are people are able to afford a bigger quantum mm-hmm. right now. So property market, I think across a lot of different countries, right, the prices has been going up steadily for the past few months. So we know that when things go up it might come down. So yeah. in the next few months, uh, do you think the property market is going to crash? So let's explore what you have just uh, spoken first, right? Mm. So the idea of affordability. So it's a pretty strange sentence if people are not into the uh, world of investing. Because how can something be going up and you say that it's affordable, right? So the truth is people are always worried about their monthly expenses. So when interest rate drop, your monthly mortgage drop, the interest paying for your monthly mortgage should drop per month as well and that contribute a large part to affordability. Mm. I think that's a key situation right here, right? Which means in the past, let's say if you're paying uh, $2,000 for your mortgage to buy a maybe say example $1.5 million property because right now the interest is lower. Even if you're paying the same amount every month for your mortgage, you can actually afford a bigger quantum in terms of property price number one to speak we need to understand property as an asset class so uh, it's a utility asset class which i love i mean there's a use and it's an income generating uh, uh, asset class so it, it itself is very powerful and of course one of the driving force of property prices remaining and staying right now right it's definitely inflation rate inflation means that rental is getting more expensive means affordability as well so when rental is getting more expensive and uh, capital appreciation uh works right when there is strong rental yield which means people can buy more expensive with a higher rental yield to pay for their mortgage so when this happens um, definitely property price will be more or less stable secondly it's an old money property is old money right which means that there's a lot of new money people are making wealth from new money methods right I do see a trend of people transferring these money right into property right now they are trying to do a very different allocation so they make the money in stocks they make money in, they make my money in crypto they say hey you know what how about i buy a house you know and just like take all this money out right so that i have something that is physical right now actually i had a, just an inter- interesting conversation with a friend talking about uh, a house that costs like 10 20 million dollars so he said uh what he invested in crypto like he's he spent two hundred thousand dollars buying this crypto and if it goes up like like 10 times 20 times it will eventually hit the uh, 20 million so to him he will just buy the house it doesn't matter because the cost of him of the house is two hundred thousand. So I think that just do play a part. But I don't think a lot of people have this kind of money to start mm-hmm. with. I look at property as a big picture. I just don't get it. Right, <laughs> property is just bricks and concrete. I believe what makes. I mean, I'm I'm looking at super broad. I mean, I'm taking a super zoom out view where it has to do with like governments. The property prices is just purely a government speculative uh, trend uh, you kind of like predict what they do and you kind of like decide where property price will go right now the government government including singapore i've they say they they took from reserve my opinion is i would think that they printed it and because you see my money supply going up every country in the world m2 has went up mm-hmm. all this goes up it has to go somewhere so one of the first places it will usually go to is property and if you look at the M2 chart moving upwards, mm-hmm. I don't see property price moving in that kind of velocity as M2 money is going up. Yeah. So I still foresee property price going up. In Singapore, right, property price is distorted. It's a very bad market to use it as a baseline because 
every of these um, people always compare about or oh, PSF price per square feet, right? It's one mm. of the worst strategy to compare in Singapore mm. because Singapore's property is based on affordability mm. and upgrade affordability. That means, can I upgrade from a simple asset class to the next asset class, right? If it is, I jump, right? And if I'm upgrading, can I skip asset class? That means, can I skip from executive condo directly to private condos or private condo to a landed home? If I can, is the price difference is not big? I skipped. So majority of the analysis right now in the market is not accurate because it's used PSF, which is a investor market. We have a 90% home ownership. Secondly, Singapore property is highly suppressed by this thing called cooling measures. For my friends in the States that you might not know, the property market is so hot in Singapore that the government have to literally come up with measures to stop people from buying. In a market like this, if in the event there are more measures in place to slow down the market, the property price will still go up because there's a desperate move to keep buying and keep scaling property. So Singapore property price will largely not change and in fact, it will be growing up more and more due to the affordability of the citizens. And in UK, the rental is so strong, right? In London and in Manchester, right? That we are talking about a 90 plus, more than 95% occupancy rate. So there's nowhere to be they'll be affecting property price to drop as well. In states and in uh, areas and cities, right, where the economy is doing well, usually I don't see the property being largely corrected downwards because they are not luxury asset class. They are what people need to stay there, to rent there, to work there. Despite this COVID still <coughs> happening or this pandemic is still going on, right? There is a surge in the number of international students going into London right now. We just, I just read an article that people are looking for a space to rent and there is not enough accommodation for these students to stay in London places, right? So to the extent that, you know, they are willing to pay one year in advance for the rental. That is how you serious? Yeah. Yes. One year right now. One wow. year in advance. So this is how like scarce properties are right now in at least London from what I see. And from my personal experience, right? Because at, at the earlier this year I actually sold off one of my residential property. I have been renting it at a three point five percent rental yield for the past three years when I was owning it. And guess what is the rental yield of my next um, buyer. Which is more expensive now. I, I'm even surprised you managed to get 3.5% in the shitty market. Uh, that was like three years ago, like for the past three years, oh, right? So it's not too bad, right? Because I bought it at a very low quantum at a point in time. So then my next buyer at obviously bought it at a higher price than me, right? Because buy over from me. Did you slaughter your new buyer, like bargain up? Do you like? No, it wasn't like a huge. Him. No, no, it wasn't. It was an okay. okay, okay price, Why? just a little bit of. I mm-hmm. bought him. No, I just really want to quickly sell okay, it. Okay, all, okay, all right. Okay. But to my surprise, <laughs> this new buyer actually got a four point one percent rental yield wow. at, the, at the new price. At the, my new price, at the price that he bought over from wow. me. From you see, okay. so from this right, it gives me a lot of confidence. Even in like a uh, Singapore property market, the rental market is going very strong, mm. and with a strong rental market for investors, right, it just means that the price is going to go up. Yeah, the demand here is yeah. pretty strong. So once once again, uh, high rental yield equals to a strong cash flow per month, Mm. more than what you need to cover your mortgage. In this scenario, people are willing to pay for a higher price because they know that with the higher price and even with a higher mortgage, they still can pay for the mortgage by renting it out. So that's why a strong rental yield market, right? or only to show that the capital appreciation will be rising and will be maintaining steadily. So even if interest rate is going to go up, even when the market changes, right, I think the correction will not be as crazy as what people are speculating without data. I'm in this field studying this data day in, day out, right? And I can say to you, the market will remain calm and stable. A little bit of correction for certain categories of luxury property, but for the rest, it's really fine. And I think it's really quite rare because in the past, we seldom see Singapore residential property giving a positive cash flow after minusing, you know, all your... Um, expenses and your mortgage but right now i'm seeing more properties such properties in the market whereby the rental can actually still give the owner a positive cash flow i think overall you still need to look at the supply and demand of properties around the world just now benny you were talking about uk right like hey the the reason boss i'm in the uk market i'm pretty clear what's happening there The, the you know in uk for you to build a property 
you the the kind of r- r- rules, the kind of paperwork you need to go through just to build a property is not funny. Mm. I, I I know from my properties there, like if you want to chop down this tree in front of your property, good luck to you. It's, yeah. it's just going to be so freaking hard to even chop a tree down, uh, because they really care for the land there, and I really appreciate that. Council yeah. is strong. Yeah, so th- that's why the the land there looks good. Uh, for I think the states wise, correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding is. There's just not enough labor to build the properties. Like in California, there's just not enough houses. Other than the difficult paperwork they need to go through, they still need to uh, find labor to build the houses, and there's just labor so, uh, like shortages all around. Mm. Yep. So it's just an overall like cluster F around the world. Like it just it's not enough demand. So yep. I foresee this co- continue happening at least for the short term. For the next six months, I don't see a problem. Yes. Like I say again, there's just too many defense and support over there for property to have a huge correction, right? There's just too many things that's supporting it versus the previous property uh, crunch and a bubble, right? This is not going to be the case in major cities, niche speculated cities. I'm not too sure, right? But I'll just say it's pretty much safe for most cities. And at the most fundamental basis uh, of property asset as a form of investment, property generally the prices move much slower compared to stocks market, right? Stock market prices go ups and down like this, yeah. but property market just doesn't <coughs> work this way. Slower. And a lot of the times, right, uh, property prices go up even when it comes down, right, the low will not be as low as the previous low. It's definitely going to go like this way. I think because most people look at property as capital preservation. Yep. So mm. they put their money there, grow in inflation, they are happy. Yeah. So just not gonna move. Yes. Let's talk about what happened when property price are correct. Interest rate sudden rise to back to two percent in Singapore, three percent and overseas up to six percent or five percent. What what will lead or seven percent, right? What will literally happen is that 50 to 60% of the homeowner, it's gonna do nothing. Done. Because they're staying there, right? So property price fluctuation don't really necessarily affect homeowners. Mm. Then we talk about the rest. Those with a solid rental yield above mortgage, it's gonna be stable. Nothing happens to them, right? Yep. Then the next group, uh, those that have lower cash flow than what they can collect every month, they have the option to refinance out cash from their property from the loan that they have been paying for the past 10 years or so or five years and thereby supporting their cash flow so i'll say the actual group that is speculating and facing that crash and repricing issue for example they get margin call by the banks or the lenders right is going to be a small portion of the property owners right now based on how i see in this whole scene of our property investment yeah so like i say for you at home, if you are in the States or somewhere else that you want to stay prudent, right? The only thing you can really do right now is to store up cash for safety net. Mm. If you have a strong cash flow in terms of your property that is positive, first of all, you don't really get margin because based on the fact that it is more than a mortgage, your property is definitely correctly priced uh, in mm. terms of lender perspective, mm. right? So if you have a severely, grossly under rental you like 0.5 or 1% rental you right then you fall into that very dangerous category of uh, overpaying right but i would say it's still a small group mainly if you're a property investor the holding power to be able to service off your monthly mortgage is very very important be it servicing off uh through your active income or through your rental income is very important for you to have this holding power to hold this property in the event of a crash i don't see a problem like even crash happening like you see 0809 is never going to happen again the banks are not leveraged they are the checks and balance are there it's not going to happen and you see the worst case scenario everybody loses their jobs covid come in the government steps in i don't think the government will allow another property crash like Mm. it's just not happen if it happens like covid they say screw you i will just block like yeah the homeowners cannot sell the banks actually during the last covid crash i just called the banks I, I can't pay my thing. So they actually, instead of like principal and interest, they allowed me to pay interest. interest. Yeah. Damn cheap, damn cheap. So no matter what happens, the government will step in clearly. I, I don't see a crash coming actually. That's, that's, that's the like, biggest problem. People are always using these very retrospective, non-measured words, you know, in a 07, 08 essay 
benchmark. But the world is so different now. The overexposure rate is so much lower compared to the past. So much measure being in place. In Singapore, there's a very strong TDSR, which is your total debt servicing ratio. Yeah. You know, in many it's countries annoying. as well. And yeah, it's stopping people from taking more loan, right? It's to prevent people from yeah. over leveraging in terms of their total <laughs> loans, right? Yeah. So mm. to use a very old data to, to say that the property is going to crash, just my you and all this stuff, it's grossly not accurate. Plus, let's not forget the income of a Singaporean right now is gonna is already much higher, right? Mm. And affordability in property is very different, right? People can afford buying expensive property. Okay, the income in Singaporeans higher, that is subjective. <laughs> no, it's, uh. it's, it's not subjective. It's really? medium, it's a average. It all move out. No, of course, um, is there job <laughs> re- retrenchment in uh. certain industry? Yes, but as a general data of a middle income class, mm. over the last five years, definitely middle income have grown in a I, I, income. I, I, yeah. I think the rich got richer, the poor got poorer. Mm. And the poor got poorer mm. doesn't mean that their salary went down, it remains stagnant while inflation kicked in. So their buying power drops. Mm. Sadly. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I would say property asset are mainly driven by the middle income all the way up to the, the high income earners. Then, hence, I just don't see a problem that uh, price will grossly be corrected. And let's not forget, once again, 90% of the home owners in Singapore own their own home. Mm. So, the, what, what happens when a property price drop? They might not even know. They don't even check price every day, right? It's not like stocks and, and stuff, right? So just like in the UK as well, which we are all exposed to, so we know very clearly it's going to stay. I don't worry about that. So for me, if you are investing in property right now, what you want to do, right, in this overhyped or priced in market, right, is to have a more realistic expectation. If you are willing to hold your property for, say, eight years, to 12 years, right? I think you are safe. It means you have no rush to sell it and if you need the cash, right? Then you shouldn't have a problem. Have a longer trajectory to, to property investment. I think let me convince them one step further. Sure. Mm-hmm. Within today and the next 10 years, will the government print more money? You look at M2 growth chart, you will just, just go all the way back. If the answer is yes, you know exactly what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your buying power will just drop, so you need to park it somewhere. And Park into the, an asset. Yeah, and the safest, safest, the even my grandma donkey can't screw up is a property. Even you buy the most shitty property. The price is still gonna go up. Yes, 99% of the time, yes. Mm. Unless you, there's no way your house gonna burn down. But anyway, like. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say a disclaimer on, uh, on recognized cities and not. Um, priced in foreigner property like, where we see very common in certain cities uh, they're just flooded with foreigners buying at uh, yeah. super extreme I, I, I think like developed nations like like US, UK, Singapore like, yeah, yeah, usually they are, they are just all. priced in and, it's yeah. really fine I mean that's how that's how I really see, see it as well mm. and on, on that note right I just mm. want to re-emphasize again that for your own safety if you are planning to flip property in the next three years mm-hmm. to five years then you are the one that will suffer the risk because you have no patience to hold mm. so have a longer trajectory once again eight years 12 years if you have no rush to sell just let it grow right you will you will just go through that that price correction if there's any and you mm. recover back in time and add a capital appreciation so just have a longer trajectory on mortgage perspective if you can take fixed interest rate i would say go for it Okay. I would say go for it. If you're very worried about this sudden uh, fat rise in interest rate, then I just go for it. Right? Take, take a fixed interest rate. Yeah. So what about people who have not started owning any property? Do you think right now is a good time for them to like enter into the property market? I think time in market is more important than uh, time in the market. O- obviously, I think they must look at their character. They must understand themselves. Like uh, Chewy is more property and more stocks when it's 50-50. The people who are less risk adverse, so they just like more certainty in life. Mm-hmm. Like, or you do not want to be so active in stocks and just cannot stand the volatility. Yep. I think Chewy's way to go, mm-hmm. it's, it's a very viable, doable way to financial freedom and retirement. Uh, of course, you need to look at your own character. For me, why I don't own a property and I stay inside that property is because I know my money is better in the stock market. Mm-hmm. I can grow mm-hmm. it faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can use my growth to, you know, every, like let's say my portfolio now is worth 5 million. I just take out a little bit of money there to rent 
and let my rest of my portfolio grow faster, you know. Yeah. So there's no point for me to buy a property. I personally think that if right now you are considering putting your money into property, right, this is a good time to go in because the interest rate is really all time low. You are buying a property at a, lo- a so-called uh, lower mortgage, but at a higher price. And imagine what happens to this, the quantum of the property when, you know, it, the price go up just simply due to normal inflation of 2%. It, yeah. Yeah, you're right. I have a question for you. I mean, just for the audience. How do you uh, go for cheap properties or go for properties with better mm. resale value? Better resale value? I don't know. Like, do you buy mm. properties that are more liquid or you go for cheap properties? Like, what is uh, your criteria? I mean, you could apply this to the States, UK. I mean, the rules in Singapore doesn't apply to other countries. So, like, what is a general, like, uh, Okay, so so if you I were to compare one property that has got, uh, it's cheap because of the quantum is lower and the other one that has got a better resale value, I'll go for the one with better resale value because it's always about thinking my, about my exit plan, right? Because I don't hold the property for a long term. Mm. As of now, I'm still, like, doing the three to five years and then flipping the property. So, I would still want to choose a property that has got a good resale value so that mm. I can flip it easily after that oh good point because uh, I see a lot of comments like asking how do I do how do how do you choose a cheap property and uh, probably in my head I never it's really it's not about choosing the cheap property yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's yeah for me mm, yeah me too like. I think rentability is number one yeah. price is what you pay mm. I mean uh, if you pay for something that you cannot rent out which is very common in our neighbouring country where you just buy something that is cheap, just, just cheap and but dead, cannot right? rent out. You, you are as good as date, right? So that's yeah. number one. If you can rent out, someone is paying for your mortgage. I mean, yes. it's a bonus, right? So next, then we talk about comparison with asset class. So in Singapore, I can safely tell you that the one better condo, the small condo, is going to have one of the most extreme rise over the last six months and in the coming months and lender asset class as well. We talk about UK when I'm exposed to, right? <laughs> you see a huge trend in terms of one or two bathers as well because those are the most common asset that's being rented out for people who travels to the main city to, to work. Mm. So I see that as a continuously uh, transacted mm. growing class. Always go back to fundamental. If people are renting their property, someone is paying for your mortgage because you collect rental, mm. those will continuously be hot in the resale market. Mm. If it's something that is for luxury stay or like resort, like say you are in Bali you're buying a resort, you know, you're going some exotic areas, right? I, I don't know the market there, but I know you are pretty much gg.com right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, this is just for uh, discussion sake because I, I always like to t- took a super long view. I do not think our this conversation will be relevant 10 years down the road. The reason why is there's this population decline because of birth rate and stuff. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is currently our parents own a house. Uh, eventually time, time goes by and one day they will pass the house to you. Mm-hmm. The thing is you, you in Singapore, you can't own two houses. So what can you do with the other house? And it goes across to the states where birth rates are pretty low. So generally the new kids growing up, they will have a house ready for them. So where's the demand? Where's the population replacement mm-hmm. to... Mm-hmm get the house uh, and you see in certain towns like in, like in Japan the yep. certain towns are okay. empty like there's just no people filling up the house yeah. in Italy so maybe this might not be a relevant conversation 10 years down the road I'm just putting it out there 100%. this might yes. not be even relevant for places like Japan actually Japan is exactly facing this issue right yep. now because of the uh, decline Shrinking. yeah the decline in population price and it's the rare, rare scenario where but property prices over there it, property is a depreciating asset yeah. in Japan in the out, outer towns yeah, yeah. of course there's three tiers of the build as well that's yeah. why some are not earthquake proof some mm. are post earthquake the mm. price does affect mm. depending mm. on the build quality because there are certain standards uphold right uh, to take certain magnitude of uh, earthquake thereafter yeah. those serious disasters so property price is really crazy uh, in Japan range from various even though they're city centre but different build quality mm. I want to emphasise again that that's why it's very important to look at fundamentally macroeconomic of a certain country mm. and state right and city I think in Singapore, population will continuously rise all the way to 6.9 million mm. in the next few years to come, right? Which is largely healthy for investment and for mm-hmm. growth because we need human, right, over here to, to be a very strong city. But if a city lose its shine and it start to have these retirement vibes, get out of there for investment. 
you might think it sounds cool oh but it's very nice to retire yeah precisely there's no more opportunity left right if you're gonna buy something now that is retirement right you're gonna get trapped man like what sean uh, well, like what uh can have said people are really desperately moving out and uh, and running out from those areas yeah on the lighter note i know how to solve this problem how if i was the government i would just solve it quite easily number one i will ban all abortion number two i will just throw away all the condoms, like ban condoms. Contraceptive. <laughs> yeah, contra- I just ban contraceptive and ban abortion. That's it, man. you got population growth. Come on, but government. But in Japan itself, the I think rate of having sex is very little. No, then I will make it easy for them. How? How ban, do you ban the hentai. Yeah. Ban all these. Yeah, <laughs> ban, ban, ban all the, the comics. Hand, yeah, ban all those. You know, <laughs> they have to do it. You know, like, I'll do whatever it takes to increase population. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. Yeah, so this is we are talking about this, this is a <laughs> pro tip for the government. And <laughs> pro tip for the government. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will. If I would, if I'm the prime minister, which I do not want to do because it's a shit job. Here you are. I solved your problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to get into a controversial of um, pro life or non pro life conversation. Uh, but I think essentially, if you do not have a sustaining economy. Uh, prospering productive um, citizens right mm. <coughs> will always be um, a declining population and i think this is a macro view that i'm so thankful that ken brought this into this picture that people are not looking at it and also with the rise of um, stocks investment nft uh, traveling lifestyle the ownership the idea of owning a home and like living it there is actually a reducing is reducing yeah. its shine actually. People are like having so mm. much more flexible in terms of their lifestyle, traveling, staying from different areas years to years, right? So we have to really ought to challenge the shine of property. But for me, I guess it's also for Chewy, the next ten years I think property is still good to go, right? right. It looks fine until until I create that rule I come the government <laughs> yeah. if y'all want to vote Ken as the oh, next shit. governor mm. of Japan comment in the comment section below <laughs> <laughs> you want us to form a new political group in Singapore as an opposition party Don- please comment we'll, we'll call it donkey party donkey party right comment in the session as well <laughs> and with that we have come to the end of this interesting episode right about property investment we don't think it will crash what do you think Show us your strong argument, right? And we'll read them and we'll see you in the next episode.